What do you hope to achieve, Mark? I want to be the best in the world. I want to go to Worlds and win gold. Hi, I'm Mike Sargent at the Cannes Film Festival. Welcome back. I'm talking today with Shannon Lanier from Arise360. He's sitting in our guest critic seat. Shannon, how do you feel being a film critic now? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to review some movies. Are you ready to review some movies? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's start with the first movie that we saw together, actually, Foxcatcher. Mm. What did you think of that film? Foxcatcher was a little twisted for me. It took me a moment to get into it. I thought it started off a little slow, but Channing Tatum, it was great to see him in a different role, a serious role. Steve Carell, I didn't even recognize him at first. Was I was like, oh, wait a minute. completely unrecognizable, yes. yes. And I'm glad that he also was in a different role. He was playing this serious, dra drama-driven character. He was really conflicted and trying to you know, live outside of his mother's shadow. So I thought it was a compelling story, and it, I was surprised to learn that it was actually a true story. It is a true story. Well, I, I agree with you. I thought that Steve Carell did a great job. Mm -hmm. And this is the same director who directed Capote mm, and okay. a couple other films that have won Oscars for his actors. Right. And I predict that come Oscar time, Steve Carell may be in people's minds. I think that's because a lot of the award committees, they love to see people tur turn to 180 and do something so different yes, than what they've been so. known for. Right. And I thought they pulled that off very well. Well, and I thought, I have to say, I thought it was very, very well directed. Next film I want to talk about mm -hmm. by another famous director, mm -hmm. David Cronenberg, his latest film, Maps of the Stars. <laughs> What Another did you think of that? twisted one. I think people are always dying in these movies that can mm -hmm. <laughs> committing suicide. One of the two. It was twisted that one, but it was interesting because it, it pulled us in with the celebrity appeal of Hollywood, following someone's life and a family's life in Hollywood, and how they're you know searching for that success. They're searching for that fame, all the way from the youngest kid in the family to the oldest adult in the family. And Julianne Moore did a great job portraying that character who's reached that age, that peak in her life. Where what does she do now that she played the great grandmother does she play the mother she can't play the kid anymore and the conflict that really goes on in her psyche about being at that stage in her life I thought it was a brilliant portrayal of what some people in Hollywood go through and have to deal with with their careers well I agree and what I liked about it was the underlying themes because mm. it deals with incest it deals oh, yeah. with uh, loss of identity uh, John Cusack plays the father mm. who's this self-help guru and the thing is though for a while when you watch a movie you forget it's a David Lynch film yeah. But eventually it starts to get really weird. So this movie, and then you to know me, it's David Lynch. Then you know it's David Lynch, exactly. As long as the word flesh is mentioned several times. Right. I thought this was sort of uh, the player meets Twin Peaks. That's, oh, that's how okay. I would describe this movie. Well, my next movie... I want to ask you about. Now, this was a strange one, The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, <laughs> which I thought had something to do with the song, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that film? I thought this film was strange when I first saw it, and I was like, where are we going with this? I thought the development of the characters could have been a little bit more intense at the beginning because I wanted to feel more about the relationship. It's about, you know, this couple who had a tragedy in their life, and then one of them tried to commit suicide, and then they're trying to put piece their life back together and I felt if they would have developed the characters a little bit more we could have had an attachment or attraction to them and we could have felt more when they broke up and you know had to go through all these changes in their life but um, I thought they did a great job uh, depicting the emotional roller coaster that one goes through when they go and experience a tragedy like this. So for that, I thought they did an excellent job. Jessica Chastain did an amazing job portraying that. I said I would have not liked to have been in that movie because mm -hmm. it would have just been you so draining. You wouldn't want to be any of those characters. I agree it would have been you. so draining every day going to the, the set and having to deal with these issues. But these are real life issues that people on the outside have to deal with. And I think that's why a film like that does so well for this international audience I agree because with of you. the dramatization of real life situations. Situations. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, th I think so, too. I think one of the reasons we have so many dramas here mm -hmm. is because I think drama is universal. They're all, all right. things that say something about the human condition, and we can all deal with that. And what I liked about that film, like you said, was that it dealt with, you know, a serious issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it did, did it in a way, you know, we kind of find out slowly what happened to this couple. Yeah. We didn't know right away that it was a child that died. Mm -hmm. We didn't know right away. But the other thing so is... So do you like that part when it's just the pieces of the puzzle? I or do. I, I like do. it put out on the table. See, no, Tell I, me what happened. No, let's move no, on. No, no, no. I like... I dig a hole slowly. and then fill it for me. Okay. That, that's my... So then they achieved that they for you They achieved that movie. for me. And I like the fact that, you know... Who are you after something happens? You have to redefine yourself. And this is a movie really about redefining who you are, mm -hmm. but then others around you may not be so into it. That's true. Now, the next movie we saw is... 
The Salvation. The Salvation. 1871. I, I know it. you like this movie. I liked movie. it a lot. I was going to say The Salvation. <laughs> yes. Now, what I liked about this movie, I'm just going to tell you what I like uh, first. First of all, it's a Western, and I do like Westerns. I didn't always like Westerns, but I do. Okay. And this, to me, reminded me very much of a Clint Eastwood spaghetti Western. Oh, okay. okay. This was like, to me, I saw this movie because the music is like, it's the Ennio Morricone music, this guitar, what you hear in these movies. The shots were like you've seen in The Good and the Bad and the Ugly and Fistful of Dollars with the close-ups and the long right. silences. But it was sort of like, what if Clint Eastwood and David Carradine were brothers Ooh, in a Western? that's a good one. That's what it seemed like to me. Now, what did you but think? I just loved it because it was so real. I haven't been a Western fan before, but this one has drawn me in and made me a fan of Westerns because it was so gritty, it was so real, but shot so beautifully. And the characters, the villain for example I mean he was dirt dog just bad and he made you believe it some of them in old westerns are kind of cheesy like well hey partner come on out meet no, you at no, high no, noon no. this was, guy he would shoot you ruthless. dead and keep walking I was scared of he him but I'm just watching the movie I was like no, no, I don't no. want to cross his path not at all not at all <laughs> we got one last movie to talk about are you okay, ready okay Last River what did you think Lost of that Lost River now yeah. that's the one yeah, Lost River, Lost River. Me, yeah. well you know Ryan Gosling is an interesting actor. Mm -hmm. I think he's very good. He started out as a child actor. He's got a lot of fans and whatnot. And I think it's great when, uh, you know, I think we're, they're all storytellers, a writer, director, actor. It's all part of storytelling. And it's interesting to see what these, whether it's a Clint Eastwood or a Kevin Costner, like what kind of stories do these actors want to tell? Yeah, and this is his directorial this debut. This is his directorial and writing debut. Oh, so he wrote yeah, it yeah. and directed it. Weird, <laughs> well shot, weird. Uh, my what question was, was what was he doing while he was writing it? Was it a little sniff, sniff, pass, you know, snuff, snuff, I, you know, you know, puff, puff, pass, sniff, sniff, pass? Me. I'm just, well, I'm just curious because it was that twisted and that dark. But another thing he did well is he shot it very beautiful. Shot it beautiful. I mean, got the great fire scenes, they got great performances from the actors, as well as uh, I explained to you before, it seemed like a documentary at some points, and you loved that that was his ability That's to. That's his trans directing style. I like right. that. I like that. So you like that part? I did. All right. Okay. Well, we, we still got a few more movies to see. So. Uh oh. All gotta right. Gotta get to it. <laughs> you're, you're watching a rise on screen. I'm Mike Sargent here at the Cannes Film Festival, and we'll be back.